أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ولو تكول علينا بعض الأكاويل لأخذنا منه باليمين ثم لقطعنا منه الوتين فما منكم من أحد أنه Hajizin. Esteemed viewers, throughout the length and breadth of this beautiful land of many waters, Guyana, the land of six people, yours truly, Abdurrahman Khan, with my three esteemed guests, no strangers to you. To my right is Maulana Asanallah Mangat Sahib, the missioner in charge of Ahmadi Muslim Jamaat Guyana in Georgetown. Next to him is our uh, guest from Canada. Mr. Faiz Ahmad Zafar, and uh, he is an honorary member, a missionary of the community, coming from Canada. He's here um, to share some time with us today. Along with him, next to him, is the missionary in London, Maulana Maksud Ahmad Mansour Sahib. And we are here to welcome you to this segment of Tafsir, the Voice of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. It simply means may the peace, blessings, and mercy of God Almighty be upon you all. Today, the topic we are going to discuss is the truthfulness of the promised Messiah. And I would invite Maulana Mangat Sahib to immediately start a discussion on this topic. Uh, quoting from the verse I recited in the very beginning, he will explain. Maulana Sahib. Jazakumullah um, Hasanul Jazah. As Maulana Abdul Rahman Khan have sta uh, started the trans uh, verses of the Holy Quran in his beginning program, uh, the translation of those verses is follow. And if he had forged and attributed any saying to us, we would surely have seized him by the right hand, and then surely we would have severed his life artery or jugular vein, and not one of you could have held our punishment off from him. This is the first quotation um, which we would like to share with our viewers. That is from the Holy Quran, chapter 69, verses 45 to 48. In this first quotation, we learn the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasalam, was addressed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself that if even he would have um, say something which Allah would not have revealed to him, then that would have been his um, uh, treatment. And that is now we learn as that the first uh, criteria to know if someone is appointed a prophet or messenger from God Almighty, the first criteria is that the God even do not allow uh, someone to make a false claim. And uh, if someone try to make false claim of prophethood, then God Almighty or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deal with him himself. And that is to say now, according to the Islamic um, knowledge, understanding that the Holy Prophet sallallahu had lived 
about 23 years and uh, continue receiving the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and share with mankind and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him to live 23 years. According to the promised Messiah, when he wrote his first book in 1880, and that was Brahine Ahmadiyya, he wrote the revelation which he received from the God Almighty in that, and he lived up to 1908, and uh, he wrote his last book, and he also wrote his uh, revelation which he received from the God Almighty, and claimed that he is the recipient of revelation, and God Almighty have um, appointed him with uh, divine authority to be the promised Messiah and Mahdi in the later days for Muslims. So based on his claims, then we say he lived about 23, uh, 28 years and that he would not have been a false claimant of prophethood if Allah allowed him to live about 28 years after he would claim that he received these words from God Almighty and publish in his books. And that is witness that till now we can receive those um, revelations and read about it. The second criteria which I would like to present today is the, his past life. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran فَقَدْ لَبِسْتُ فِيكُمْ أُمَرًا مِنْ قَبْلِهِ أَفَلَا This is the second quotation and the complete verse, the translation is say, if Allah does so will, I should not have recited it to you, nor would he have made it known to you. I have indeed lived among you a whole lifetime before this. Will you not then understand? Chapter 10, verse 17 from the Holy Quran. Now this criteria of uh, knowing that someone is from God Almighty is a very beautiful that someone who have lived a life among people and he never lied how now he would lie uh, how, how he would lie at the stage where he have almost reached at the last uh, part of his life uh, especially having example of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in mind that when he claimed to be a prophet uh, that allah have appointed him as a prophet based on divine authority uh, he was at age of 40 one of his um, companions, we say Sahabi or disciple, he heard about his claim and he did not ask even no question to him and he accepted him as a prophet. Later on he became his first Khalifa Abu Bakr Siddiq. So uh, that is to say that he had seen him never lied in his uh, life. That's why he was called Prophet Muhammad as sadiq Al-Amin, the truthful and the trustworthy. So based on that um, proof of living a life before claim, then he proved to be a, truth, a truthful person and his followers believe in him. In the same manner, um, quotation number three, we present for our viewers to see as the promised Messiah, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam lived his life and served Islam before he made this claim that God have appointed him as the promised Messiah and Mahdi. So prior to this claim, quotation number three is as for the author we can say that he had been few Muslims. There had been few Muslims, if any, who have been so content in their service to Islam, service by purse and pen, by personal character, and by speech and silence. Because, uh, this reference is Ishatu Sunnah, Volume 7. This was the magazine which was printed by the Ahl al-Sunnah al-Jamaat or oh, um, Ahl al-Hadith um, of course Maulvi Sanaul Amrat Sari um, from him and his Jamaat. So uh, these are the quotation which um, I share with you. Now with regard to the third cr criteria which I would like to present is that the holy speech, the, the words which uh, uh, the claimant will present to you. The message is that if he is from God, he would always um, propagate to attain nearness to God and uh, obey the commandment of God and follow the commandment of the God. And if he is the person who, let's say for example, saying that do not follow commandment of God anymore, then from the 
uh, his message you can understand that he is not really from God Almighty. He is not a godly person. So the books of the promised Messiah, more than 80 books he wrote, when we read the message which he have, that is the commentary of the Holy Quran, explanation of the Holy Quran, um, blessing of uh, attaining nearness to God and acceptance of prayers. So that uh, his speech um, also is another proof that uh, he was from God Almighty. Yeah, thank you very much, Mulana Sahib. Uh, there you have it, esteemed viewers, the Torah explanation of these verses from the Holy Quran. Uh, concerning the truthfulness of the promised Messiah and the prophecies. I would like to now invite our guest, uh, uh, first up, to kindly give us a heavenly sign concerning the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam, and his truthfulness. <coughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim If a person is truly from Allah, then there should be a mighty sign of sword for the Mahdi. There was a clear sign from Allah, the sign of the eclipse. Reference for the Holy Prophet, may peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, said, Surely two signs will appear for our Mahdi, which have never appeared before as signs of truth for anyone else. Since the creation of the heaven and earth in the month of Ramzan, the moon will be accepted on the first day of the the night of the, there is an eclipse, and the sun will be ex, eclipsed on the midday of its days of eclipse. Both these eclipses will be taken, will be placed in the same month of Ramzan. And these two signs have never been occurred before since Allah created the heavens and earth. Sunan Dar Kutni. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Farisai. And the, these prophecies did take place before the, uh, the occurrence of this, uh, this uh, eclipse of the sun and the moon, as the prophecy said of the Holy Prophet Islam. And he also said that the heavenly bodies have never eclipsed for the birth or death of anybody except on this occasion, he said, Inna le Mahdiana Ayatain. For our Mahdi, there will be surely be two signs. And the eclipse of the sun and the moon, in the first case, the moon, when it eclipsed, it eclipsed in the first days, and that is the, uh, it wasn't the Hilal, as people were saying, just the first narrow, um, uh, what you call it, the uh, crescent. It wasn't the crescent that can, that can eclipse, but it's the moon literally on its days of eclipse. And likewise, the sun it eclipsed on the first day of the days of the eclipse, and likewise on the, the sun eclipsed on the middle days of its eclipse. And these uh, two signs were shown exactly in the lifetime of the promised Messiah, Hadrat Mirza Ghulam Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam. He called the whole world to witness, and in the year after that, it eclipsed in the Western world. Now, you heard the translation of the prophecy, and, and that is what actually took place. Now, I would ask the operator to kindly bring up the picture of the promised Messiah so that our viewers would be reminded um, whom we are talking about and this holy personage and uh, this uh, pious person. There you see the picture of uh, the picture. Why do we show you the picture? So that you may know whom we are talking about. This is a very uh, pious uh, person uh, the, who came to fulfill the second advent of Jesus Christ because we believe Jesus Christ of Nazareth died a natural death and he came to revive the faith of Islam and to invite all and sundry, all religion uh, to one platform that is the unification of mankind. That's the purpose of Islam and he also said Jariullah Allah has told me that I am the champion of Allah in the mantle of all the prophets all the prophets that came on earth with a message for the different people and they are awaiting the second advent as you heard last week you heard the second advent of Buddha the second advent of Jesus and the second advent of Elias and all the other prophets who are the people are still awaiting the Hadrat Meza Ghulam Ahmad made it very clear that this is the one Allah that is inviting you now I'd like to ask the operator to kindly bring up um, the fifth uh, quotation 
in which uh, God Almighty makes it very clear. He says, And uh, when my servant asks thee about me, say, I am near. I answer the prayer of the supplicant when he prays to me, so they should hearken to me and believe in me that they may follow the right way. The Holy Quran, chapter 2, verse 187. Incidentally, this verse comes in the middle of the verses concerning Soma Ramadan, fasting in the month of Ramadan. But this verse is a testimony to the truthfulness of a person who receives guidance from Almighty Allah. First of all, his prayers are answered. And they become so righteous that the Quran says, Radiallahu an wa an, that Allah is pleased with him and he is pleased with Allah. Now, when you reach to that stage, that is the nafsi mutmainna. Nafsil mutmainna. When you reach to that stage when the, the, the soul is pleasing to Almighty Allah, Allah allows that whatever you say come to pass. That is one sign of the righteousness of a claimant and a person who is close to Almighty Allah. The other way of communication that God ensures that he communicates with the believer or the one he appoints is that they get through dreams. We see in the Holy Quran in Surah Yusuf when the two prisoners were with him and he was able to determine and explain the dreams, Allah gave him the understanding of how to explain dreams. He had truthful dreams and he was able to explain the truthful dreams of other people. Some people get dreams but they don't know how to interpret them. They don't even know they're getting these dreams as signs because their nature does not accommodate them that facility. The next stage, the third stage, is kashaf, which is a vision. You'll be sitting in between awakeness and drowsiness. And just as you watch the TV as you're watching right now, you will be seeing certain scenes and these things will come to pass. These are all from Almighty Allah and He communicates with His chosen ones in these different ways. And in Islam, we are guaranteed all of this. We don't know which other religion teaches this, but Islam, for sure, the Holy Quran teaches us all of these. And then the final and complete and very uh, final and, and concrete communication is Al-Wahi, revelation, Al-Ilham, revelation. And that is what is guaranteed and vouchsafed to all the prophets of God Almighty. And Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, alayhi salatu wasalam, on numerous occasions, he was, uh, he received wahi and ilham from God Almighty. And these were uh, kept in one book which is called Tathkira. All the revelations which he received from God Almighty, they were recorded properly. And to this day, we can have the English translation. We have so many translations in many different languages. I would like to ask the operator also to uh, bring in uh, number six uh, slide for us, please. And uh, God Almighty makes it very, very clear that Allah would not leave the believers as you are until he has separated the wicked from the good. Nor would Allah reveal to you the unseen. But Allah chooses of his messengers whom he pleases. Believe therefore in Allah and his messengers. If you believe and be righteous, you shall have a great reward. Chapter 3, verse 180 of the Holy Quran. This also is a testimony to the fact that uh, the truthfulness of the promised Messiah. I would like to give you one uh, incident in the lifetime of the promised Messiah before I um, invite our next speaker, Mulana Mansur Sahib. And that is uh, incident uh, number 7 slide, please. Uh, in the lifetime of the promised Messiah, there was a claimant in a Zion city in the United States. He claimed that he was the representative of Jesus Christ. He's the fulfillment and all of that. And this, he was a great leader, a great Christian leader. And pump and show, you can see the picture. He had a great, he used to dress in uh, very expensive robes. And the promised Messiah, Hadar Meza Ghulam Ahmad, uh, he said, to, he communicated with him all the way from India and in 1902 in September of 1902 he wrote to him and said that Allah has appointed me as the fulfillment of the second coming of Jesus Christ who is dead Jesus of Nazareth 
has died a natural death, is buried in Kashmir. And this man scorned at uh, the, the, uh, uh, the promised Messiah. And he said, uh, when he, he abused the Holy Prophet in so many ways, he would scornfully abuse the Holy Prophet and the religion of Islam. He would look at it with disdain. And I would not like to make the length, lengthy commentaries, but just to give you a gist of it, he claimed to be the representative of God on earth. And the promised Messiah disputed that and said, if you are truthfully the vicegerent on, God, on earth, as you claim, and I have been vouched of this from Almighty Allah, that I am the Imam Mahdi and the promised Messiah, I challenge you to a prayer duel. He never accepted. He never accepted. In 1903, when the newspapers in America challenged him, why are you not accepting the challenge from the Mohammedan Messiah? He said, if I should put down my foot on this mat, I will crush him. The promised Messiah said, by saying that, he has accepted the challenge. Now he has entered into the realm of the challenge and Allah will not spare him. What happened to him, esteemed viewers, was that he started to say that uh, uh, God has told him that he will destroy Hadrat Mirza Gullah Muhammad al qadiani But instead, this man was afflicted with paralysis. He was exposed for all the wrong things he did. His daughter was afflicted with burns and he couldn't cure her. Then the believers that he had with him in his church, they saw that he couldn't perform any miracles. They left him. He embezzled the fund of the church. They saw that too and they left him. Zion became a deserted city. And if you go to Zion today, nobody there in Zion knows about Alexander Dory. But the world, all over the world, knows about Mirza Ghulam Ahmed al qadiani in at least 207 countries. What happened is that the Boston Herald published a big headline with a picture of Adar Mirza Ghulam Ahmed and said, Great is the Mohammedan Messiah who has prophesied the demise of Dawi. Now, because of limitation of time, I would like to ask Mawlana Maksud Sahab to come in, please, with the miracles of the promised Messiah. Asalaamu Alaikum wa well, Miracles are the most important things in the life of, of, of a prophet. And as you mentioned that uh, Mirza Ghulam Muhammad al-Islam received the revelations and uh, visions, and that is the biggest miracle of a prophet. Because through visions, through revelation, he, they receive the knowledge of unseen. So as Holy Quran is uh, full of knowledge of unseen, and Holy Quran is the biggest miracle of Holy Prophet Sallallahu because it is full of knowledge of unseen. And only God, the all-knowing, who has the knowledge of unseen can tell a person, a human being, about the, about anything unseen. It could be either past or future. Same thing happened with the Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Salam, that his biggest miracle was shown through prophecies. Allah, the God Almighty, all-knowing, has given him many prophecies, many uh, knowledge, many news about the uh, future, about the past. For example, he prophesied about the plague, he prophesies about the earthquake, about the wars, about the deaths of enemies. So all those prophecies were fulfilled in his lifetime and is still being fulfilled after his demise. And then the second criteria, or the second type of miracles is the promises that he was given. That he and his community who are true followers of him will be protected in these kind of calamities. The calamity of plague, he was protected, his followers were protected, and they did not even use any kind of medications. And he said that this will be my sign, that my community who are truly following my teachings, they will be protected, and they don't need any kind of vaccinations. The rest of the people were using vaccination, and they were still dying. But the members of the, uh, of the MDA Muslim community, uh, the followers of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Salam, they were saved miraculously. And not only that, he would be saved from all kind of harmful things, whether they are spiritual or physical. And then another promises were given, or another kinds of promises were given, the victory of Islam. Uh, Allah Ta'ala said to him that I, I will cause thy message to reach the corners of the earth. And today's our very presence in Guyana fulfills this 
uh, this promise then Allah has given him promise of that I shall give you a large party of Islam and our community is in more than 207 countries and then he was promised that I will help you spiritually and physically and we see that our community is being uh, helped and not only our community but he himself was specially helped by Allah Ta'ala physically and spiritually the second form or the second criteria of the truthfulness of promised Messiah is the followers we have to see what kind of message that prophet is given and what kind of followers uh, the, the, the prophet is producing like as Bible says that uh, a good, good tree brings forth a good, good fruit so and it is very commonly lo known that you can tell uh, a tree by its fruit so the followers and the message of that prophet uh, is a big uh, proof of the truthful, truthfulness of the promised Messiah I will give one uh, short um, quotation from the writings of the promised Messiah he says so listen all Jew it is slide number 12 so listen all Jew who consider yourself to be of my community when you truly tread the path of righteousness only then will you be counted in heavens as my community so perform your prayers five times a day inspired by such a such awe and awareness of the presence of Almighty God as if you were seeing him with your own eyes also observe the days of fast sincerely for the sake of Allah fulfilling their requirements each one of you who is accessible to the God should pay the cost similarly anyone upon you who upon home pilgrimage has become obligatory and has no cause to exempt exemption for exemption must perform the pilgrimage do good deeds in the best of manners and reject evil with repugnance remember that no deed of your which is devout of righteousness will ever be in entertained by God an act of goodness is only that which is rooted in the fear of God so this is a beautiful teaching that he presented and because of that beautiful followers were uh, uh, were created as well thank you very much Maulana Sahib uh, to uh, fin close up the program today I would like to invite Maulana Maulana Sahib to discuss the uh, God's support in favor of the claimant Jazakumullah Ahsan al um, quotation number 13 Allah says Allah chooses his messengers from among angels and from among men Holy Quran chapter 22 verse 76 in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the present tense which also can be um, used for future tense and uh, if the Holy Prophet وسلم, was the last prophet it should have been only past tense because the prophethood was completed uh, with regard to um, quotation number 14 we see that John the Baptist may peace be upon him when he was asked whether he was Elijah and he denied it John chapter 1 verse 21 but later on, Jesus, may peace be upon him, said that John, was the, Bap John the Baptist is Elijah, believe it or not. Matthew chapter 17 verse 10, 30, um, verse 10 to 13. So it was only when Jesus was informed by God, then he knew that um, Jesus, uh, John the Baptist have represented the second coming of Elijah. The final quotation number 15, uh, the Holy Quran states very clearly, that Allah has decreed most surely I will prevail and my messengers that is chapter 58 verses 22 now according to this promise of Allah that in 2004 when there was a, a tsunami in Indonesia not a single Ahmadi Muslim was uh, affected a matter of fact the one of the village which government had to ask them to vacate it and they carried away the people who was living in that there were some Ahmadis living there then there was an earthquake in 2005 in Bangladesh and India and Pakistan and uh, the houses may be few, few houses might be damaged not a single Ahmadi lose his life in there so these protection of Allah Almighty even this time that show us the help and support with the community thank you very much I remember even in uh, Azad Kashmir when there was a huge earthquake there were two brothers one was Ahmadi and the other was non-Ahmadi the non-Ahmadi house came tumbling down but the Ahmadi house was there and they couldn't understand why so because we have come to the end of our time today, 
We, it's been a pleasure being with you. You may come in at 198 Ornak and Landscape Streets in Georgetown. If you would like to meet the mission in charge and like to have more information on Islam Ahmadiyya in Burbies at 12 Chapel Street, New Amsterdam, call us at 333-3984. In Georgetown, the number is 226-7634. In Linden, the number is 444-4979. And you may meet our missionary there at 58 Ali Cock Road, Karakara. It's been a pleasure being with you. We hope to see you next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.